Hey everyone, welcome to Zach Attack Reviews. Thank you for joining me for my first Throwback Thursday. I'm going to be reviewing movies weekly based on a poll of movies I've never seen before. And the one that won the one to poll the first time is The Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring. Of course, I knew none of the movies had a chance because this is one of the most popular movies of all time that I've never seen. So excited to break down the good and the bad of this film and how I feel overall and does it still hold up directed by the great peter jackson with an all-star stat cast and obviously back then we didn't know but now we know this was an all-star stat cast usually i break down the premise and the rating but if you're watching this you probably have seen lord of the rings before so i'm gonna get straight into the good right off the bat i gotta say i love 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 the hobbits and the shire and everything they did with that they bring this whimsical charm in this movie that really balance out the darkness and the seriousness of Sauron and the orcs and the goblins. And then on the other side, the elves and the wizards and the dwarves. They, it was a great idea to make them the main characters, the ones that we see everything through their eyes because it were a really wondrous tone to the film. Just spending that first hour of the movie in the Shire, learning about how the hobbits live, relaxing, eating, smoking, <laughs> the weeds, and how they just live this simple life where they stay away from everybody else, don't really go on adventures. It really sets up the, the wondrous and adventurous feel when Frodo, Sam, Mary, and Pippin finally get on to go on that, that adventure, where Frodo reluctantly is going on his adventure by himself, but his BFF, which is one of the best bromances I've ever seen on film, Sam comes with him, and then they mistakenly run into the other two which are, are hilarious as well them four was just a great group and had a, a lot of great chemistry and just made me laugh and smile and feel happy throughout the film with how innocent they were because they don't really know how the world is they just only hear the stories so all these things that they're hearing we're experiencing through their eyes and it feels great a character that's connected to them that toes the between two worlds of the hobbits and the wizards is Gandalf, a character I see it has inspired so many wizards because before this, this version of a wizard, wizards were always so goofy and, and, and not cool and he made them cool. He has this whimsical charm to him as well at when he's with the hobbits, how much fun he's having when he has the fireworks show, how he plays with Frodo, how he plays with Frodo's adopted father, but he has that side of him that like, don't play with me i'm not a clown <laughs> and when he gets starts speaking that language that dark language that the wizards speak and everything is dark and he, he looks like he gets 10 feet tall i thought that was really great juxtaposition of that like don't mess with him he really is that wizard that will just destroy you so i really liked hit the way he played this character and how he told that line between both worlds and then gets betrayed by his fellow wizards and then has to you know forced to help his adopted family family basically the the outside family that yeah other people don't really mix with i thought that was really good storytelling advice it made that character really good for a movie that's 22 years old visually it holds up really really well with them mostly using practical effects which i really appreciate because so much things are cgi'd up that you could tell that they're fake th these days and obviously they use cgi here a lot because it's a fantasy world but they use enough practical effects and mixed with cgi where it feels tangible everything fe almost feels tangible and real obviously there's certain things like the big winged hawk that uh gandalf has to jump on and, and save himself that was totally cgi'd and certain shots here and here looks you know you could tell that it was cgi but for the most part i thought the cgi was done, used really well to do the magic and the different enhancements they did to certain magical things throughout the movie so it made the the movie not look so dated because of the great use of practical effects and CGI. This movie doesn't look like it was made 22 years ago. It looks like it could have been made uh, just a couple years ago. It doesn't look that dated, which makes this movie almost timeless even. And I feel like they used the CGI uh, to great effect to bring to life these monsters. And the one that I want to shout out is the Balrog. So... I've never read the Lord of the Rings books. I've never watched the movies when they first came out. This is my first time watching this movie, but I've watched Rings of Power, which I really enjoyed. I know a lot of Lord of the Rings fans don't like it because they're like changing certain things, but I enjoyed the show being ignorant to everything before it. And they teased the Balrog in that show. Spoiler, sorry. 
So I was always interested, like, what the hell is that? When they teased it, I've kind of heard of the monster through the years because people, you know, Lord, people talk about Lord of the Rings, but seeing it here fully fleshed out and doing stuff, not just teased, just really a part of the story was exciting. It was awesome. I was just like, this thing looks scary. It's just everything is doing. It has so much personality for a CGI creature that can't talk. And he, 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 actually affected one of the characters and the plot so to a great effect so i really really appreciated that especially somebody that you know saw rings of power and seeing that tease to see what it turns into already was really great orcs the goblins and whatever that mixture was towards the end all look fantastic because of those practical uh, effects they feel really alive they feel like they're like real a real race not just some minions for something else it feels like oh this 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 is an actual part of this world the way that armor is how they have tributes to how they graduate warriors i thought all that stuff was really good and it came out really really impressive and terrifying especially that big one that ends up you know having a bow and arrow and just really coming after the halflings and while the adventure is fun because of how whimsical the hobbits are, it does feel perilous. There's no scenes or moments that I feel were wasted, which is surprising for a movie that's three hours and 48 minutes. I didn't say at the top, I watched the extended edition because that was what everyone told me I needed to watch. What a journey. I had to break it up into two parts and watch a little bit here on the train, watch a little bit here at home. It's, it's, it's a long movie, but it's worth it because the, the the details, I can't imagine what they could have taken out. There's probably certain scenes they maybe could have shortened, but I can't see them taking out full scenes of this movie to make it an hour less. Because the regular theatrical edition is like an hour and change less than this movie. And I felt like almost everything was needed. Whether it was the time we spent in the spire to really show you what Frodo was leaving behind to go on this journey, the life that he knew and how simple and great it was, but also the fact that he had to leave it because he was bringing danger there and bringing danger to his fellow people and the chance meeting of aragon who's a total badass and he was just a great character in this and i just love the conflict that he had as being his unnamed king and having the blood of a traitor in him and the flashback scene showing his great grandfather and how he defeated sauron all that was really great and it just gave him a lot of depth that they didn't have time to really do and and his role the romance was okay but i think uh, honestly he was just a really really great character and he was this really noble character and i really gravitate to those type of characters so i thought he was awesome and then all the other colorful characters they meet on the road or the monsters that they run into like the sea creature that was really awesome that felt like that came out of a chulu book i thought all that stuff was really really great and just kept my attention and you don't see those kind of things anymore in high fantasy films we don't get those now like people it's like it's out of style to do high fantasy in the theater we only get it in television so see a big blockbuster version of it was really really awesome movie is a lot more violent than i expected i don't know what i was expecting when it came to the action i thought it'd be a little bit more kiddie than this i don't know why and it was action-packed throughout which was great because it kept it you know some of the action scenes i was like okay i get it you insert action scene here so audience is not bored but it all really played out felt perilous and i was always worried something was going to happen and then we did lose some people gandalf one of my favorite characters in the movie up until that point very likable wanted to see it, him go to the end one it felt like he was important to the journey getting taken down by the balrog which made the bar even more scarier and more important and then bar borrow him i hopefully i'm saying his name correctly who's i didn't really like him that much but i thought he was an interesting character a person that was fighting for his people who just wanted that ring to protect his own but not realizing the ring was corrupting him all that they did with him made him really interesting because he was such a interesting juxtaposition to Aragons. I thought that they you know both of them being from the same land, but him being exiled and understanding how the ring is trying to persuade him and how he just threw his allegiance behind Frodo because he see how pure of heart he is. And then him just kind of questioning Frodo the whole time and wanting the ring for himself because he just didn't trust him. I thought all that made for interesting, engaging story plots while they're on this journey. And the way he went out like a badass, trying to protect the halflings as much as he could, I thought was just really moving. And I kind of got sad when he, 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 he died. And I was like, oh, maybe I cared about this character more than I expected. And I have to compliment some of the things that this movie, that, you know, watching this movie, realizing what it's done for the fantasy genre, kind of 
building its own world building that we don't get from others. There's not, like, this is the first time we've gotten something like this on a big screen like this. So in death, having its own pathion, not being a copy of like other religions, just creating something from scratch creating these wonderful characters with these crazy powers and this evil that feels ever looming and all these weird visions and different techniques and things that they have. It just felt like a world you just want to get lost in. And I'm really excited to see more. So I was super engaged throughout the movie and especially that first hour i was like this is just this is working for me i really like it but that second hour came in and it slowed down the tempo it slowed down the pace a lot it was like a dial a lot of dialogue to explain things and i could see where they may have trimmed certain scenes down not take them out but trimmed them down for the theatrical release because some scenes felt like it was spinning its wheels a little bit trying to get to a point that i knew it was going to get to anyway so i could see how that that pacing issue for me in this that second hour of this three hour and 48 minute film or a second like hour and a half could feel a bit slow and, and slog down a little bit especially if you're not someone that read the books or not really into high fantasy and i didn't i never read the books and i do like high fantasy but i just was like i kind of know where this is going just let's just get to these certain points there's certain arguments you guys are having where i know like okay you're gonna just get to that point and the biggest example is the council meeting scene before the fellowship is you know, combined and put together around Frodo, I really just felt like, yeah, like, I get it. You guys are arguing what to do and everything, but I already know where this is going. And maybe in the, at the time when you have no idea and when this comes out for the first time in 2001, it doesn't affect your, because everything is new. And you're just interested to see what's going on, all these new characters. But me, for me, who has heard about this movie so long, you know that a second part is coming, that it, that scene doesn't age as well for the pacing. Certain scenes for the Frodo's friends, as much as I love them, how fun they were, how funny they were, when they did certain stupid decisions that felt like they should know not to do, that to cause an action sequence or cause danger, really frustrated me because it made me feel like the characters were not understanding the severity of the situation, even though Frodo, who they're following, understood the severity of the situation. Like, you guys are running away from a scary force that can kill you. Why would you light a fire to show people where you are? Or Pippin knocking over the thing into the well. Why are you moving around that much? Just stand still. Certain things like that, I was just like, okay. I got over it, but it just was annoying in the moment. And the ending. I, I, like, watching a three-hour and 48-minute movie it's a big commitment. And you're watching all this build up, all this build up, all this build up. You're enjoying the journey. And then it kind of just ended flat for me. I get it is a part one of a three part story. But when you're watching a movie for that long, you will hope that there's like a, a real good ending that caps off something in the story just a bit i i just felt a little bit dazed and confused and like whoa that's it no this is, this can't be it and then the credits came in and i was like whoa is there after credit scene but obviously after credit scenes weren't the the rage back then but i was just i was just like wow i can't believe it ended like this this is how it kind of felt when the new dune was made which turns out to be a part one and it kind of ended in a weird way and maybe they got this from this got that from this movie but it just really feels weird for a movie that's this long to end in that way where you're like I thought about it, I was like, okay, I still want, I need to get to the next movie. And I think that's what they wanted to do. But I can imagine at the time, the, this, the second movie wasn't coming for a, at least a couple months or a year. So it just, I would have had a bad taste in my mouth if I saw this when it first came out. I really had a blast watching this film. I'm really, really glad I got to finally see it. It was epic. It was fun, had fantastic characters and really, really, really showed what it was. It set the bar for high fantasy. How good high fantasy be written, uh, displayed. Peter Jackson did a wonderful job directing this film. Not many shots feeling too stagnant. Always having character movement. The actors really, really committed to the roles. There was nobody that I felt like was miscast or or not doing the role really well. I think Elijah Wood. Sometimes his expressions can kind of like be all the same, but for the most part, he did a wonderful job as Frodo, as a character I got behind and really, really was rooting for. So I really, really like this movie. I'm excited to go on the journey for more. I was looking at the run times for the other ones and I was like, oh my God, they're like four hours. But if they're that, if I heard that they get better and better. So if that movie is better than this one and it's four hours, I'm excited to see that and see how everything comes together and ends. So. 
I'm really excited that you guys voted for this movie for my first throwback Thursday. I thought it was great, and I'm happy to say that I'm going to give this movie a B plus. So you guys, did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate? Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about the movie, any things that you wanted to talk to me about, specific scenes and favorite parts, or if you disagree with my, my negatives and think I'm crazy when I'm talking about the pacing. Like the video if you like my review, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you can see my reviews, reactions, and ranking lists. I'm going to be doing these throwback Thursdays from now on. I think it's a great idea because I'm like a new cinephile, and there's so many classic movies I've never seen. So I'm going to be putting up a poll every either Thursday night or Friday so you guys will vote on movies for me to watch and review that are old school. So please subscribe, check out the community tab, and you're going to see those that on your timeline, those polls vote 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 to see what movie what should pick what movie you want me to see and you can watch more of my content 